When I was a researcher at Oxford, I met a brilliant professor of physics who showed me a way of thinking so powerful that it completely transformed my ability to learn. It's a technique used by some of the greatest thinkers in history and something you can learn. So what is it and how do you learn it? Well, that's what I'm gonna show you. Most people would die sooner than think. In fact, they do so. Those are the words of the 19th and 20th century, he lived a long time, philosopher Bertrand Russell. But that applies to other people, not you or me. Or does it? Is your thinking logical or lazy? Do you have any original thoughts created by linking ideas and knowledge? Or is your entire intellectual world just a collection of other people's thoughts that you've read and filed away? Is that what Russell was getting at? Our brains have evolved systems of shortcuts to help process the vast quantity of sensory input and data that we have to process every day. They're useful and we couldn't cope without them. What do you do on hearing a loud explosion in the street? You don't stop to think about it. You run and take cover, think later. But nonetheless, we rely on those shortcuts a lot, too much. We apply them where they're not appropriate, like when we're trying to learn difficult concepts. And it leads to poor thinking habits. You've done this, I definitely have. We readily accept a view without carefully evaluating it, or we quickly discard a thought if it doesn't align with our worldview. Because thinking is hard work, thinking is demanding, and it challenges us. It's easier to have that blurry-edged, fuzzy thinking with wispy ideas that aren't really clarified. Part intellect, part intuition. Inexact. And that sort of feels okay. It feels as though we've carefully thought about a position. But we haven't actually. So what's the answer and how do we think better? Philosophers worked this out over 2,000 years ago. That's how we have Socratic questioning. Socrates used this to teach his students by asking them questions to probe their understanding, to find inconsistencies in their views, to locate the hidden assumptions in their ideas. Socratic questioning was used to teach the young John Stuart Mill, who became one of the greatest philosophers and thinkers of the 19th century. And he was godfather to Bertrand Russell. Bertrand Russell created a set of rules for teaching and whilst they're not just about thinking, they will definitely help you to become a better thinker. So I'm gonna share those at the end of the video. But before I do, I wanna share some methods that have worked for me to improve my thinking, and I think they'll work for you too. But before that, I wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. I do most of the work for this YouTube channel myself, which means I've had to learn filming, lighting, and video editing. And Skillshare has been an essential part of that learning journey. And recently I've been working on trying to improve my writing because a video starts with a script and it's better for you, the viewer, if that script is well written. Skillshare has been helping with that too. This class, Creative Writing Bootcamp, Start a Brand New Story by the best-selling author, Myla Goldberg, has pushed my writing forward. It teaches you how to find ideas, build character and create real feeling people. It might not seem directly relevant to YouTube scripts, but it's teaching me how to make my writing more relatable and engaging. I'm starting to find it easier and can write scripts more quickly. You've probably heard of Skillshare, but did you know it's the largest online learning community for creatives? It has thousands of classes led by industry professionals from just about every creative field you can think of. Illustration, film, design are just some of them. If you want to start your creative journey or develop your creative career, join other creative members by going to this URL and the first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. Get started today. Don't assume you think well, because that's probably not the case. Good thinking is hard work and it doesn't come easily at least not to most people. It's a skill that you have to work on and has to be honed. But you have a brain, so you can probably do it. And by extension, don't assume that other people are good thinkers. You should encourage skepticism within yourself, but don't let that slide into cynicism. Be open to new ideas, but rigorously evaluate them. The gateway to your mind should be like airport security. Thoroughly examine everything before you let it through. And how should this examination take place? Well, it's a process. And it starts with careful listening or reading or viewing of the ideas that you're consuming. What are they saying? What's their point? Does it derive from a reasoned, logical argument? Is it consistent? Does it contain underlying or implicit arguments? If so, can you work out what they are? Is it emotive and trying to make you feel a certain way to persuade you? What's the evidence? Is it from a reliable source? Or do they use language to try to persuade you that evidence is unnecessary? 
Obviously, they shouldn't do that. Develop this process so that it becomes second nature and it will prevent your mind from being cluttered with other people's rubbish. Because you don't want that. Your mind is a precious resource. You wouldn't go rummaging through people's bins, taking their rubbish and then hoarding it at home. Probably. So don't do that with your thoughts. And read. Read the ideas of renowned thinkers and reflect on their ideas. All of that's a good start, but it's not enough. You must develop another intellectual trait. And I haven't met a highly accomplished person who lacks it. It is the driver of thought. What am I talking about? Curiosity. Where does your curiosity take you? Follow it and ask questions. Why, 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 how, how? Be like a child of five. Now I said I'd share Russell's new 10 commandments. Here they are. Do not feel absolutely certain of anything. Do not think it worthwhile to proceed by concealing evidence, for the evidence is sure to come to light. Never try to discourage thinking, for you're sure to succeed. When you meet with opposition, even if it should be from your husband or your children, endeavour to overcome it by argument and not by authority, for a victory dependent upon authority is unreal and illusory. Have no respect for the authority of others, for there are always contrary authorities to be found. Do not use power to suppress opinions you think pernicious, for if you do, the opinions will suppress you. Do not fear to be eccentric in opinion, for every opinion now accepted was once eccentric. Find more pleasure in intelligent dissent than in passive agreement, for if you value intelligence as you should, the former implies a deeper agreement than the latter. Be scrupulously truthful even if the truth is inconvenient, for it is more inconvenient when you try to conceal it. Do not feel envious of the happiness of those who live in a fool's paradise, for only a fool will think that it is happiness.